Hello everyone! I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome back to our channel and today Scotty and I are finally getting to unbox the latest expansion Commander Masters. This has been an expansion that's been highly criticized and highly discussed mainly for the entry price point. This is a draft booster box and as you can see here this is coming from our local game store. Shout out to Mox in a Hole here in Edinburgh and Yep, the price for a draft booster box is about 300 pounds or 285 if you're a member of the store. So these draft boosters are a bit of an oddball because this is also one of the first master sets for drafting set boosters and collector's boosters. So they've separated it in three parts and uh, this is unusual usually it's either just um, collector's booster and then some other boosters and so on and so forth so for example in uh, if you remember dominary remastered it was draft boosters so people could draft it and then just the collector's booster so this time you get all three of them and yeah it's it's a bit interesting we've already gone and have put up a guide on our channel so you can find it somewhere around here of uh, uh, what's inside these boosters so if you're looking for a quick and easy what's gonna be inside what the slots are and the percentages so this type of videos what we do is we open and unbox uh, the contents of a booster box but we take our time read through the cards give you ideas and opinions about what the cards are and how they play and so on and so forth and then yeah we just kind of deep dive in the cards that we've not seen before or that we should give an opinion about we don't try and, and go only after the chase cards we don't try and only go after the big amazing expensive things we don't rush through it so if you're wanting to to rush through it this is not the kind of video for that and we will try to have a recap at the end of the video but still that's not the video so without further ado let's get cracking let's have a look first at the booster box proper it is very green as it should be because it is so expensive it's green it's it's a uh, lime green so that's very nice you get a little bit of a fluff as usual and this is the first master for commander players so this is the first time they've actually reprinted cards only for commander player made a set for it so there are a lot of big hits in here we've outlined the best most expensive cards and also the best new cards that you can find in the set now even though it's a, ma a master set the reprints are mostly in draft boosters but you can find non-reprinted cards which are inside the commander decks proper and those ones you can only find in sub boosters and collectibles so with that out of the way let's have a look this has been printed in belgium as usual that's very nice I wonder if the collectors boosters are going to be printed in belgium so let's get to opening this wonderful set. I'm fairly excited for this. I am a commander player. I've, I'm not a, an assidual commander player as time allows, but um, yeah, when, when time constraints allow it, I do love playing commander. And uh, I'm, I'm interested in this because there are some cards in the set that are quite good. That would be nice to open. So there's that. And okay, so here's the box as such. You get the drafting archetypes. So you can stop should you want to, to have a look at that and pause it. And here you get the commander decks and the themes, which will be unboxing. So we will be unboxing everything on this set expansion. So we will have all the decks and all the booster boxes. Make sure to stick around onto our channels to see that. And okay, so here are the boosters. Et voila. Okay, so a weird thing. First off, there are only 24 boosters. There are not 30 or 32 boosters in here, but the cards inside, there are 20 cards. And the reason for that, and just uh, quickly, it's because there are a lot more commons. So there, I think there are 11 commons uh, or 10, I don't remember. But yeah, so this is the reason why. Okay, let's get to cracking. And, and it's mainly because when you're drafting oh they're a bit hard when you're drafting the set um you want to be building 60 card decks oh uh, that's why okay so this is a nice token all right we'll start off and we'll read the first one rapacious ones a 5-4 it'll draw the drone has trample and when it deals combat damage to a player you create that many zero one colorless drazi spawn creature tokens that have sack to add one generic so this is a mana generator in red haunted cloak 
And it is an artifact equipment in case for one, cost only three generic. Equip creature has vigilance, trample, and haste. So that's pretty decent. Well, less giants is a six five a giant. It costs seven and has undergrowth. When it enters the battlefield, these will damage target opponent for each creature card in the graveyard. So this is good for the reanimator deck. Abundant Harvest is a sorcery. You choose land or non land reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind and then put that card into your hand, rest of the bottom of your library in any order. And that's not bad, that's for ramping. Renowned Weapon Smith, a human artificer that allows you to tap to add two generic mana, spend this mana to only cast artifact spells or one blue and tap. And search your library uh, for a card named Heart Piercer Bow or Vial. So this is mostly for the artifact deck. So it's gonna be the white and blue if I'm not mistaken. Um, Brass Knuckles is an artifact of equipment. The Equip Preacher has double strike as long as two or more equipments are attached to it. So this is for the equipment deck. Uh, Crows and Tusker, this is a reprint that I remember. Borby, six, five cycles for two and one. And when you cycle him, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal that card, put it into your hand and shuffle. So this is really good. And this is a prismatic piper. You get this in one every six booster packs. Well, if you're unlucky with the legendaries, you can always just have something to play for any color. And now we start with the new boardless art cards. And this is a beautiful Elvish Mystic. Wonderful. Wonderful little new version of it. Commander Sphere, this is a classic. Palace Sentinels, when it enters Valfir, you become the Monarch as a 2 4 human soldier. Course Augur, Zombie Wizard 4 2. When it dies, you draw X cards, you lose X life, or X is the number of creature cards in your target player's graveyard. So again, mill and reanimate. Fungal Plots, because <laughs> the uh, Saprolings are back. So that's pretty cool. I love Saprolings a lot. You still have quite a few of them. And Shaman, it, it costs two, and uh, for two, one generic, one green, exile like a card from your graveyard. You create a 1 1 Saprolink creature tokens, and then you select two Saprolinks to gain two life and draw cards. So, this is a slow sat kind of card, and this is a first and common, so maybe we can keep it here. Oh, final party, and this is not bad. This is for the reanimate. You get to search your library for two cards, you put one in hand, one into your graveyard, and then shuffle. So, this is really good for the reanimate deck. Oh, Shimmer Mirror, another great one. Flash and it's a 2 2 cost 3 generic and it's an artifact creature and you may cast artifact spells as though they have flash. This is actually a really, really good commander staple for those artifact decks. Then it's a Capuchin Paragon. Uh, it's a 2 2 human knight, first strike vigilance lifelink, and then R and, and equipment spells you cast cost 1 generic less to cast. So this is for the equipment decks. Cable Patriarch is a 5 5 human wizard. This is great for those little token decks. Uh, sacrifice a creature, the tiger creature gets minus two, minus two until the end of turn. Then you can exile a creature card from graveyard and do the same. Uh, it's not bad. Then you get card or ghost chieftain. This is our first rare. So this one is a legendary creature. Center Spirit, 3-4. This spell costs one generic. Unless it cast for each creature card in your graveyard. And then once during each of your turns, you may cast a creature spell from your graveyard. And this is part of the reanimate kind of deck. Even though the colors and the archetypes are not of the reanimate deck, it's still a very good card. And uh, that's interesting. And here we go with the Awakening Sun's Avatar. This is a classic for Ixalan. Dinosaur Avatar. 7-7 seven, seven, that costs 8, and when it enters the battlefield, you, if you cast it from your hand, you destroy all non-dinosaur creatures, so it's a great wipe, it's non-legendary. And then we get a foil, foil Tabarax Hope's Demise, a demon cleric that cares about having clerics, and it has lifelink as long as it has 5 or more plus 1 plus 1 counters, and when another non-token creature control dies, you put up plus one plus one counter on it. So this is a great for sacrifice decks. And if it was a cleric, you may draw a card. And if you do, you lose a life. Very dark, very dark little card. But well, that's interesting. And then we get a spirit and rats token. So I'll keep the foils here for now. Uh, uh, let's do it here. Okay. All right. First booster down again. I'm very excited for these. I love the new versions of the cards. So let's see what we get. All right, Swift Response, great little destroy target creature that stamped. Dwarven Hammer, as an equipment, whenever it's a battlefield, you pay two generic. If you do, you create a token, it's two one red dwarf berserker, then attach the hammer to it. And the equipped creature gets plus three, plus zero, and has trample. Little 
uh, equipment deck card, Threading Heath in one of the lands, enters the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, choose a color other than white, and basically you can tap to add colors of any uh, of the two, so either the white or the chosen. Supernatural Stamina, this is a great little instant, it gives a target creature plus two plus zero, and when they die, when a creature dies, they return to the battlefield tapped and it's on its control, so very good for re ETB or just keeping your creature alive. Ram through, <laughs> a nice little instant. I remember this one. Target creatures you control deals damage equals to its power to a target creature you don't control. It's a fight spell. And if the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to the creature's owners instead. Ooh, filigree attendant, very good for the artifact decks. Has a star three flying homunculi and or homunculus as a two generic and two blue and its power is equal to the number of artifacts you control so it's quite a little nice cheeky creature gavin silversmith human soldier two three and when this is battlefield you put a plus one plus one counter on each up to two target creatures you control so really good in the counter deck Thermorphic Expanse, Anok, Bondkin. This is a 2-1 Dog Soldier, it has outlaws, so it puts counters, and each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has first strike, so definitely counter and token deck is really good. Feed the Swarm, another classic. You destroy target creature and enchantment, and opponent control, you lose life equal to the permanent mana value. Good removal. Ooh, nice little boardless art of Command Tower. This is very, very beautiful. Very, very gorgeous. So we know this card, but this is a beautiful rendition of the Command Tower. Very nice, very nice card. Cartographer's Hawk. As a 2-1 bird, flying creature, you know, never deals combat damage to, to a player, it controls more lands than you, you return this card to the Sonar's hand, and then if you do, you search a library for a planes, you put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. This allows you to pair up the land difference with any opponent that has more lands than you. Mirror Landscape, beautiful, beautiful card in the borderless version. Very nice. We know this card, but it's so gorgeous. Honestly, Drew Tucker, you did an amazing job, man. Honestly, beautiful. This is, uh, it reminds me of Impressionist art. That's very, very nice. Very beautiful. I must say, so far, these uh, borderless arts are amazingly well done. Armorcraft Judge. It's a 3 3 elf artificer. When it says Biofield, draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. So the white and green token and counter deck. And this is really, really good for that. Spectral Searchlight is an artifact, a three generic, and then tap, tap choose a player. That player adds one mana of any color they choose. So this is nice for ramping. Squee! Oh, the Goblin Bob. Oh, he's so cute. They've downgraded the rarity of Squee here. And uh, yeah, they've shifted up certain cards like Smothering Tide to Mythic, and they're shifting down like Squee and not many other cards uh, uh, from rare to uncommon. This is mainly done for drafting, but also I would say because the value of certain cards need to be adjusted. So yeah, this is a 1-1 one, one Goblin Legendary Creature at the beginning of your upkeep. You may return him from your graveyard to your hand, so you always get to keep him with you. <laughs> okay, Padim, Console of Innovation. This is another downshift. This is a beautiful, beautiful artifact creature. It's a 1-4 Vidalcan Artificer, and it gives hexproof to all your artifacts. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control the artifact with the greatest mana value or tide, then you get to draw a card. This is amazing for artifact decks. Ooh, now this is a beautiful reprint. Queen Marchisa, Human Assassin, 3-3, three, three, and it is a Smardu, and it costs four. It's Death Touch Haster, and it's a Human Assassin, and when it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch at the beginning of your upkeep. If an opponent is the Monarch, you create a 1-1 one, one Black Assassin, Creature took with that touch and haze. So this is a great little commander usually used for Monarch. And also it has really, really good color combination. So I really, really love this commander. I'm not a huge Monarch fan, but I do love it with this commander. So this is a beautiful rare. Ooh, evacuation. This is a nice little rare. It's an instant return all creatures to their owner's hands. This is very annoying, especially if you're not playing a creature deck and your opponents are. <laughs> very nice. Then we get the Thriving more foil. So this is another one of those choose lands. I will call them. I don't remember the specific name, it doesn't matter. And it's the black one. So it's nice because it gives you for drafting or at least a way to uh, choose more colors. That's very, very nice. And Eldrazi spawn token, beautiful. And a cat token, very beautiful. Okay, next up. 
And as usual, yeah, as we said, we do take our time here. We read out the cards, we explain everything to you, we give you opinions, and yeah, we just enjoy it overall. Team Art Battle Rage. This is an instant that costs one generic, one red, and it gives double strike to a creature until the end of turn. And it has Ferocious. That's an ability I haven't seen in a long time. That creature also gains trample until the end of the turn if you control a creature with four power or greater. So this is for the Power Matters deck for the red and green. That's very, very good. Prophetic Prism. This is a very classic card. When it answers battle, you draw a card and you add one mana of any color by tapping it and one generic and it's a new art i think if not anyway is very beautiful legion vanguard this is from Ixalan. it's a 2-2 sacrifice another creature legion vanguard explores and it's a very very nice one i really like it and it's great for the tokens and the counters that's more specifically courage in crisis you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and then proliferate another one great for the token deck deep analysis great great little reprint target player draws two cards and you can flash back it for cheaper not playing life oh thriving more again the black one though that's not bad oh knighted mirror so this is a counter matters card has a depth for two generic and one white and it's a depth one whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on him it gains double strike until the end of turn so this is very good for those counter decks very very good oh got a snipe haven't seen you in a while goblin shaman 2-2 two, two. when you're casting this sorcery spell it deals two damage to each opponent this is very good in the years of deck very very good fall from favor and giant creature it's an r and when it enters battlefield tap enchanted creature and you become the monarch so very flavorful and enchanted creature does not untap and is control on top step unless that player is the monarch so that's very very nice removal and again if you're the only one that plays around monarch then that's great the problem is monarch tends to pass around because that's a um, an ability that whenever they deal damage to you they become the monarch so kind of iffy i will stay away from monarch altogether if you want to win oh a braid has been reprinted as well this is a great great little damage and also deal with artifact card uh, it's a good instant, I like it. Entourage of Tress is a 4-4 Elf Soldier. When it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch, and then, and this can block an additional creature each combat as long as you're the Monarch. So very good if you're the Monarch. Ooh, Arcane Signet, of course. And Heartless Act, this is a very, very good interaction. So you destroy target creature. No counters on it, or you remove up to three counters from target creature. Very, very nice. Uh, so, but, you know, against the token deck, this kind of card, it, it would be okay. Um, and, but against most decks, this would be a good removal. Rise from the Tides, great little token creating card. Creates a tap 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token for each instant sorcery card in your graveyard. So this is not necessarily only for the reanimate kind of deck. You can also do it for... Um, the is it kind of deck and and really any kind of deck that really focuses on our own instants and sorceries that's great geode golems a 5-3 golem has trample and deals combat damage to a player you may cast your commander from the command zone without paying its mana cost so this is really really good to get huge commanders through so that's really really nice so you can just put a commander into play without having to play the huge cost but you still have to play the tax so that's something to keep in mind. Hamza, Guardian of Arshin. This is great for the counter decks and this color combination. It's a 5-5 Elfin Warrior. It costs one generic class to cast because it costs six usually. First creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. And then spells you cast cost one generic class to cast for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter. So very, very, very good. If you do get this, go into the counter way of things. Oh, Gorex, the Tomb Shell. This has been downshifted. It used to be a rare. It's a 4-4 four, four Zombie Turtle. As an additional cost to cast a spell, you may excel any number of creature cards from your graveyard. And the spell costs two generic class to cast for each card exiled this way. So it usually costs eight, and it can, it can go down to two if you're lucky enough. And then Death Touch, and whenever Gorex attacks or dies, you choose a card random exiled with him to to put that card into its own sense. So that's really, really good because you don't lose the cards that you've exiled. So it's a double, double card and it's a really good rare that they've downshifted to uncommon. So really great for reanimate. Giselle Goldman is a 4-4 cat warrior. It's a rare first striker. And then you can pay three generic and two white attacking creature control, get plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of attacking creatures. So tokens decks, very great. 
and also any go white decks really sublime exaltation is a sorcery it has undaunted which means that the spells cost one genetic less to cast for each opponent so it would cost usually seven and so that means it can cost four destroy all creatures that's not bad that's a very good removal actually brass knuckles and the foil version oh a little eldrazi token a 10 10 very nice oh and a little flying dragon very nice aha uh -huh. very good i really love these tokens so far okay duke we're getting near to the half i think this is the half of the first block of this booster so okay champion of the flame has trample it's a one one and uh it gets plus two plus two for each aura and equipment attached to it very very good for the equipment and aura decks fireman vessel of course this is a classic it has a battlefield tap and you get to add two mana of different colors it costs four generic so very very nice dread drone is a four one eldrazi drone and enters the battlefield create two uh, colorless zero one eldrazi that you can sack to add mana it is a very expensive card for what it does so unless you can freely reanimate it it's not really that great oh elysian Carrioted. this is a one one plant and for two and and you have to add one mana of any color if you control a creature with power four or greater you add two mana of any one color so this is a power matters dex in the red and green Resculpt. this is a great instant you exile target artifact creature is control kids a four four blue and red elemental creature token and you can just exile something that's really small on your side of the board and and get a 4-4. Bullshock Battle Gear and equipment that gives plus 3 plus 3 to your creature. Not bad, it's okay. Custody Squire has a 3-3 three, three Spirit Cleric and has flying and will of the council. When it enters the battlefield, starting with you, each player votes for an artifact creature or enchantment card in your graveyard. Return each card with the most votes or tied for most votes in your hand. So this is a good vote kind of thing for your side. And I would reckon this is more for the equipment kind of deck. Ooh, Spike Shot Goblin is a 1-2 Goblin Shaman. It deals damage equal to its power to any target very very interesting and good for the equipment deck and the buff deck i guess um yeah any buff deck really cadaver imp is a one one cost three it has flying and when it's the battlefield you may return target creature card from your grave to your hand great for the reanimator decks 100 percent counter spell this is the new rendition of the counter spell and borderless from rk post he is one of my favorite artists of magic the gathering i mean i have a lot but he is up there and counter target spell this is a classic and it's a beautiful beautiful art beautiful i love it i love it okay dread return this is a great reanimate card you can return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield for four or you can flash back and sacrifice three creatures so if you have any small token creatures or creatures that you can bring back really 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 good card for the reanimate decks ether gale return six target non-land permanence to their owner's hand so this is so this is a very annoying card and a good interaction also i just realized that i put this in the uncommon but it's it's common so it's been down shifted for this expansion i mean it's a it's a great card for reanimate anyway ether gale all right, Skyland Despot is a 5-5 dragon, and when it's about for you, become the monarch, and I begin your upkeep. If you're the monarch, you create a 5-5 dragon creature token with flying. Whoa, you get dragons? No way, man. Slice and dice, all right. It costs a whooping six, and you deal four damage to each creature, so that's a great board wipe for smaller decks. And then it cycles, and then if you cycle it you can deal one damage to each creature which is still good if you're playing against small little creature matters decks oh tabarax hopes demise in the gnome foil version oh caleth sun main familiar beautiful beautiful art and jesper uh Asin? very beautiful art it's a one one horse whenever command you control attacks you put a plus one plus one counter on it and you can partner it so this is very good for any counter decks oh omnixilis of the black oath Ooh. omnixilis before he got a facelift I mean, yeah, before that facelift. Very dark card. Anyways, uh, three loyalty. Planeswalker that costs three generic and two black. And uh, you plus two. Each opponent loses a life. You gain a life equal to life lost this way. So you can get three life. And then minus two to create a five, five black demon creature token. With flying, you lose two life. 
So you can do that and uh, turn that in enters and you can defend it really easily if you don't have any creatures to defend it. And then the ultimate with minus eight, you get an emblem for one generic or one black. You sacrifice a creature, you gain X life and draw X cards where X is sacrifice creatures power. So this is great for, I guess, token matters kind of decks. Um, the enemy decks can be okay. So it's not bad and it can be your commander. So this is a decent rare. Ooh, our first mythic. Savage Beating. This is an instant, and it costs three generic and two red. Cast a spell only during your turn and only during combat, and then choose one. Creatures you control get double strike until the end of turn, or you untap all creatures you control after this phase. There's an additional combat phase, and you can entwine it, so you can do both for one generic and one red. Very cool, and very good for these colors. Ooh, Training Center. That says Battlefield tapped, unless you have two or more opponents, and you tap to have one blue or one red. Very nice, I'm glad they brought these lands back. It's a shame that if I'm not mistaken, they did not bring them back into the decks. Tragic Slip as an instant, and this is a foil version. A tiger creature gets minus one, minus one until the end of turn, and then Morbid, uh, you can give minus 13 minus three until the end of turn instead if a creature died this turn. So this is a very, very, very good removal for any black color deck. And then a Drowsy and a Demon token. Wow, nice. Very, very good blue removal. Not stress that enough. Okie doke. Ooh, for X and Mare. Nice. Very beautiful art. Okie doke. We get the Ash Barons. This is a classic. Beautiful. Rots Chambler. So this is a fungus. Yay, several links. 1-1. One, one. Whenever another creature you control dies, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. Vizier or Tumbling Sands is 1-3. You end up target permanent, so this is good for ramps. And whenever you cycle him, which you can be cycled for two. You can target permanent, very decent. Demons, Demons Disciples, the three, one. Answers battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, very annoying. Vial of Dragonfire, which you can search with the creature that we saw earlier. You can tap a two generic and tap it. It's an artifact and you sacrifice it to deal two damage to the target creature. It's a bit expensive for what it does. Spectral Giga grasp oh this makes a return this is a two cost enchantment aura enchanted creature you could enchanted creature can attack you or planeswalkers you control and enchanted creatures can block creatures you control so this is a very very good annoying low interaction because well it helps you but it does not help your opponents cyclops and electromancer this is great in the is deck it's a four two when it's his battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls, where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Drown in Sorrow, sorcery that gives all creatures minus two, minus two until the end of turn, and you square one. Very decent removal, especially because there are a lot of small token decks in the drafting format. Faithless Looting, classic, draw two cards, discard two cards, and you can flashback it. This is a nice little card that can be used fairly in most decks. Meyer Triton has a 2-1 Death Toucher and it's his battlefield. You mill two cards and gain two life. Very good for the reanimate deck. Cosalex Predator is a 3-3. Eldrazi Drone and it's his battlefield. Create two Eldrazi Spawn. That allows you to ramp. Oh, Soul Ring makes an appearance here in the uncommon slot. For X and Ingester, mm -hmm. this is a Cute little face. Yeah. It's a 3 3 for X and Beast. It has imprint, and whenever it enhances battlefield, it makes exile target non token creature, and then it gets plus X plus Y, where X is exile creature's card power, and Y is its toughness. So this is great for the ramp deck. Very, very good with the ramp deck. Acidic Slime makes a return. It's a news. It costs. Uh, five and it's a 2 2 death toucher that enters battlefield and destroys target artifact, enchantment, or land. Can be any land, but really nice. Oh, body double. This is a shapeshifter that enters battlefield for five and it and becomes a copy of any creature card in your graveyard. So great for the mill deck and well, also just the reanimate deck. And it's any graveyard, not just your graveyard. Subira Tulzidi Car Subira Tulzidi Caravaner. This is a 2 3 human shaman, has haste, and for one generic and another target creature you power, two or less can't be blocked this turn. And then for one generic and one red, you tap and discard your hand until the end of the turn. Whenever creature you control with power two or less, deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. Eh, not bad. There are better. 
And get Ruinized makes a return. She's a 3 3 legendary creature, cost 4. And when she enters the battlefield, sky 3. When she dies, you draw 3 cards. If 3 or more creatures die this turn, the second part is a bit annoying. Um, it's, it can trigger only if you wipe, really, because if people are careful, they don't really want to trigger that part for you. Andrek Sahar, or Andrek Sar, Master Breeder, is a 2 2 human wizard. Whenever he cuts a creature spell, you create an X. 1 1 black throw creature tokens, where X is the spell's mana value, so that's really, really good. And when you control 7 more throws, you sacrifice him. This is a classic. It costs 4 generic and 1 black. So it's not bad if you find a way to keep sacking the thralls, uh, you can keep him on the board for longer. Ooh. Chromatic Lantern makes a return. Beautiful little card that allows to, all your lands to tap for any mana of any color and also it taps for any mana of any color. Very beautiful. Ooh, Arcane Signet Foil. This is nice. And this is in the boardless art. It's fairly dark. And yeah, this is beautiful. You can hardly see the face of the guy down here. It's very, very dark. That's beautiful. And I'll keep it in this. And then we get a Soldier and Fraximir. Okay, so far only one Mythic. Quite a bit of rares, some decent ones. Uh, nothing amazing, I will say so far, but there are quite a few borderless cards that are very beautiful. Ooh, Thriving Bluff, nice. Fierce Empath, as a 1-1 one, one elf, enters the battlefield, Mr. Strict Library for a creature card with mana value 6 or greater reveal and put it in your hand, then shuffle, so great for the ramp deck. Deranged Assistant, great to mill cards and add mana to a ramp yourself. Supply runners, when it's a battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So this is very, very good on a counter stacks. Prismatic Glance, a classic. It costs two generic and you tap it to add one generic or tap one generic and tap it to add one mana value color. Dragon Folder, this is a sorcery that creates two one, one red goblin creature tokens. Great for the tokens decks. Carrier Thrall, when it dies, you create a one, one it draws a sign creature token that basically adds a mana whenever it's sacrificed and then it's a two, one, not bad. Creates tokens, ramps, not bad. You can sack it and you still get something out of it. Cry Shroud Claim as a sorcery, search your library for up to two forest cards, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Very, very nice for a ramp. Heart Piercer Bow. When an equipped creature attacks, Heart Piercer Bow deals one damage to target creature, defending player controls. And that's that's really, really nice. Equips for one. It's a little equipment. It's not that great, but it's okay. All that glorious, this is a good, good aura. It, it chants a creature and gets plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control, so great for the white and blue deck. Crash of Rhino Beetles, really, really cute Rhino Beetles. Uh, it's an insect, it's a 5-5 five, five that costs five, it has trample and it gets plus 10, plus 10 as long as you control 10 or more lands, so very good for the ramp deck. And another very good card for the ramp deck is the Beanstalk Giant. This is an uncommon, it has star star, it's a six generic and one green, and it goes on an adventure for fertile footsteps. It's a sorcery and search your library for a basic line card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle, and it's not tapped, so you can play it and use it right away and then the, um, his power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control so very very good Ooh, reality chef great one exile target creatures control manages the top card of your library it's good for removal of a really nasty creature and for manifest you basically uh, put it's it's a morph kind of card and you just put it face down and it becomes a 2-2 creature and then you can cast the card that's face down for the actual cost of the card itself anytime you could with um, a sorcery if I'm not mistaken all right victimize a great reanimate spell great great little reanimate spell predatory rampage creatures you control get plus three plus three until you have a turn each creature your opponent control blocks this turn if able so this is really really good for power matters and just ramp decks and then just overall anything because you just buff everything and you force your opponents to block so it's really really good oh yeah pashiri sage life crafter is a one two human artificer that for three and tap you create a colorless servo artifact creature token and for four and one green you tap it to create a xx colorless construct and if a creature token where x is the number of creatures you control so very good for token decks Oh, Thrix, the Sudden Storm is a 4 or 5 element giant, it has flash, flying, spells you cast, mana value 5 or greater, cost 1 generic, lost to cast, and can't be countered. If I'm not mistaken, this used to be a rare. Ooh! 
Razakath, the foul blotter. This is another mythic. It's a beautiful one. It costs eight, five generic and three black. It's an eight, eight demon flying trampler. And you pay two life, sacrifice another creature, search a library for a card, put that card into your hand, then shuffle. Not bad at all. It's a very nice tutor kind of card. Oh, Vindictive Lich. It's a rare, it's a four one zombie wizard for three generic and one black. When it dies, you choose one or more. Each mode must target a different player. And Tiger Opponent sacrifices a creature, Tiger Opponent discards two cards, and Tiger Opponent loses five life. Very, very good. Boil Subordinate is a 3 1 zombie, it's foil, and it has menace, it costs three. And it's a lieutenant at the beginning of your combat of your turn. If you control your commander, each opponent loses three life. This is very annoying, it's very nice. Oh, and draws a cyan token, that's a little bit chipped. And then a Phyrexian Germ, nice. Almost done with the first part of the unboxing. So far, not bad, not bad at all. All right, Ghostly Flicker is an instant that exiles two target artifact creatures and or lands you control then return those cards on the battlefield on your control. So great for re-ETBing any cards. Oh, okay, Fist of Flame, giggity. That's a one generic and one red instant. Draw a card until the end of turn, target creature gains trample and gets plus one plus zero for each card you've drawn this turn. Very, very good for your Izzard deck. Shelter, target creature control gains protection from a color of your choice until the end of turn, and you draw a card. Very good protection card for your deck. Battle Screech, great token generator. Crimson Fleet Commodore is a trampler, 5-2. When it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. Read the bones. Read the bones, man. Scry two, draw two cards. You lose two life. Not bad. Tusker Captain. It has Outlast, so you put a counter. And each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has trample. Very good for the counter token deck. Oh, there's Mighty Piper. Yet again. Living Lightning is a 3-2 Elemental Shaman. When it dies, return target instant sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Very good for the Yizza deck. Shipwreck Dowser, creature, metaphor, wizard. Has prowess, great for the Yizza deck. 3-3, three, three, and when it enters the battlefield, return target instant sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Aha, uh -huh. ooh, Kodama's Reach in the Borderless version. Beautiful little card. It's a sorcery you search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those cards, put one onto the battlefield top, and then the other one in your hand, then shuffle. So this is a very, very beautiful art. Very, very gorgeous. Ooh, Lightning Greaves, very good. Well, this is actually a really good card. I know it's uncommon, but still, it's a very good card. Very good opening. Intangible Virtue, of course, it's also very good for the equipment deck. Intangible Virtue is an enchantment that gives Anthem, basically, and Vigilance to all your creature tokens. That's very nice. Jade Mage, uh, it's a 2-1 that creates green sapling tokens. Virgil of the Ancient is a 4-7 tree folk that costs 6 and has Kicker X. Uh, that's, wow, okay, expensive. And then sapling creatures and other tree folk creatures get plus one plus one that's very very cool and when it enters the battlefield if it was kicked you create x green supplement tokens i think this is very expensive unless you have a really good ramp annex harden in the forge is a star three legendary enchantment creature demigod and its power is equal to devotion to red and so it's at least two uh three and then when it or another known token creature you control dies you create a one one red satyr Creature token with this creature cannot be blocked. If the creature had power four or greater, you create two of those tokens. So it's a decent card. Ooh, Mizix of the Ismanius. Or is Magnus? Yeah, it's Magnus. Legendary creature Goblin Wizard is a 2 2 that whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value greater than the number of experience counters you have, you get an experience counter and then instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one generic less to cast for each experience counter you have. Great for the Izzard deck. Great rare for the Izzard deck. Ooh! And finally, we get to see one of the medallions reprinted. This is the Ruby Medallion. Very beautiful card. All red spells you cast cost generic less to cast and it only costs two. Very, very beautiful card. Ooh, Spectator Seating. This is another one of those two or more opponents land. The Boris one, very beautiful. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. and we get a Foil Training Center. This is a nice, nice booster so far. Very beautiful, very, very beautiful. And then we got a Spirit and a Mirror. Okay, last card in the pack. Let's see. I'm starting to speed up a little bit. If we see cards that we've seen before, we skip them. 6-5 Cryptid Serpent. This is great for the ramp deck. The spell costs one generic elastic for each instant source of card in your graveyard. And it's also great for the Izzard deck. 
Mirror Smith is a 2-1 human artificer. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may pay one generic. If you do, you create a 1-1 one, one mirror artifact creature token. Great little card for the artifact blue and white deck. Opal Palace. Okay, this is a land. You tap to add one generic and then one generic can tap it. No one mana of any color of your commander's identity. If you spend this mana to cast your commander, then it's this battlefield with number of additional plus one plus one counters on it equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone in this game. Very good little card actually. Quite de decent for the, um, the commander drafting part of this. So it's quite decent for that. Ministrant of Obligation is a 2-1 with Afterlife 2. So whenever it dies, it creates tokens. Very, very nice for the token deck. Bonders Ornament. This is an artifact, cost three generic. You tap that one mana of any color and then four and tap it. Each player controls a permanent name this, draws a card. So at least you get to draw a card every time. It's a common, it's okay. There are better ones, but if you're looking for some draw, it's good. Blood Aspirin, when you sacrifice a permanent, Put a plus one, plus one counter on Blood Aspirant, and then you tap one generic and one red, tap it, sacrifice a creature or enchantment, and then it deals one damage to target creature, and that creature can't block this turn. This is really nice, actually. It grows the card really well, and if you have Sack or Reanimate, it's also very good. Witch's Cauldron makes a return, and it's an artifact, costs one black, and then for one generic and one black, tap, sacrifice a creature, you gain one life, you draw a card. Crawling Infestation is an enchantment at the beginning your upkeep you may mill two cards and whenever one or more creature cards are put into graveyard from anywhere during your turn you create a 1-1 one, one green instant creature token this ability triggers only once each turn so it's it's okay it's kind of slow but it creates more tokens oh are still ingot beautiful beautiful one it's an artifact that costs three generic it is indestructible and adds one mana of any color very nice sky snare spider is a 6-6 six, six digital breach huge spider this is good for power matters and for ramp. Commander's Fear, yes. Ooh, Dark Steel Mutation. This is a Richard Kane Ferguson. Boreless Art, this is a beautiful, beautiful art. This is a one generic and one white and Shaman Aura. The Shadow Creature is an instant artifact creature with a base power and toughness of zero one. It has indestructible, loses other abilities, card types and creature types. So it's a pacifism with a kick. It's a beautiful, beautiful card, beautiful. Covered up Peacock is a three, four flying bird. And whenever it attacks, you may go to Target creature, defending player controls. Yeah, it's not bad. Meteoric Mace makes a return. This is a six coster of equipment. A quick creature has plus four, plus zero, and has trample, and it costs four to equip. And whenever you cast it, it has Cascade. It's okay if you have a ramp way to it, but otherwise not that great. It's a slow equipment and a deck that really wants as small creatures to become big as quickly as possible. Efficient construction. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you create a one one thopter artifact creature token with flying. Very good for the Artifact that. Ooh, Molimo Maru Sorcerer. So, star star elemental that costs four generic and three green. Has trample and its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Very good for the land decks. So, any ram decks is really, really nice. Akiri Fearless Voyager is a 3 3 core warrior, and whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, you draw a card, and then for one white, you unattach an equipment from a creature you control. If you do tap that creature, and it gains indestructible until the end of turn. Very good for the equipment creatures. Ooh! -hoo. Marin of Clan Nell Toth. This is one of the better reprinted commanders of the set. Not value wise, but more of like how popular they are and how good they are. This is great for for aristocrats and dags. It's just, just a, a great, great reprint. As a three, four human shaman, it costs two generic, one black and one green. And when a creature you control dies, you get a spears counter. And then at the beginning of your end step, you choose target creature card from a graveyard. If that card's mana value is less than or equal to the number of spears counter you have, then return it to the battlefield. Otherwise you put it into your hand. So that's really wonderful. You reanimate as well. It's it's just a great, great little commander. Beautiful. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Deadly Raleigh. This is a great reprinted card and it's a wonderful one to have. Deadly Raleigh is an instant. If you control your commander, this costs nothing. And you exile like a creature. It's a wonderful little card. Very, very good removal. And I'm happy they reprinted it here. Really great rare, really great pack. Dread Drone is a 4-1 that drives you 
drone that we've seen before, and now it's foil, and a servo, and a demon. Okay, we're starting the second half now. Ooh, Wind Rider Wizard is a 2-2 human wizard. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, you may draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. That's interesting. Sunspear Shikari, as long as Sunspear Shikari is equipped, has first strike and lifelink. This is very good for the equipment deck. Surfer's Blast, it's an instant that deals two damage to each creature and each player. You, if you cast a spell during your main phase, it deals three damage to each creature and each player instead. Very good board removal for, uh, against token deck, a small little creatures. Pilgrim's Eye is a 1 1 Thopter, has flying, and when it's a battle, if you must search your library for basic land card, reveal and put it in your hand, then shuffle. Great for the ramp decks and just overall mana fixing. Just an abomination is a 5 3 that costs 5 generic and 1 black and you can regenerate it and it has swamp cycling for two really really good for the reanimate decks broken wings destroy target artifact and shaman or creation flying not bad good interaction goliath sphinx it's a huge eight seven that costs seven sphinx that just flies that's great for the ramp oh thriving isle the blue of the choose one color and it taps for both colors. Reverse Engineer, Improvise and Draw 3 cards. This is really good for the artifact deck because it costs 5 usually, but you can cast it for 2 if you have enough artifacts on play. Oh, Tragic Slip, Mesa Return. Rapacious Dragon, 3-3 three, three Flying Dragon, costs 5. When it says Battlefield, you create 2 treasure tokens. Very nice card. Whirler Rogue is a 2-2 Human Rogue Artificer. When it says Battlefield, you create 2 1-1 one, one Colors. Salter artifact creature tokens with flying and then tap two and tap artifacts you control. Target creature cannot be blocked this turn. Very good for the artifact deck. Palace Jailer is a human soldier. This is a 2-2 two -two, and when it enters battlefield, you become the monarch. And when it enters the battlefield, also you exile target creature and opponent controls until an opponent becomes the monarch. So it's a it's a prison effect, but only so long as um you're the monarch so it's not great i don't like it much because of that have a gesture whenever you sacrifice a permanent it deals one damage to any target it's a five five for five it's a little card it's really really good in decks that allow you to sacrifice Ooh, brian Lynn, the moon kraken this is a six eight kraken great in the ramp deck when it enters the battlefield or whenever you cast a spell the mana value six or greater you may return target non land permanent to its owner's hand and it has part very good for the ramp deck. Oh, Baird, Steward of Argive. As a 2-4 Vigilance and creatures he can't attack you or planeswalkers you control unless they control a pays one generic for each of those creatures. Very good. Very little. Very good, actually. Oh, Maelstrom Wanderer. And this is a classic. It's a 7-5 Elemental. They cost 5 generic and Teemur. And it gives creatures you control haste and then you cascade twice when you cast it. Very, very good. Card. And then we get Angelic Field Marshal. It's an angel. There's a 3 3 flying. It has a lieutenant. So as long as you control your commander, it gets plus 2 plus 2. And creatures you control have vigilance. Very good for all things. Ooh! Wow! Fierce Guardianship and the Boreless Art. Oh my god, that is so cool. This is Randy Galagos. Oh my god, this is great. This is a great reprint. It's one of the better reprints, actually. It's one of the more value reprints of the free casting spells. And yeah, you get to counter target non-creature spell for free if you have your command in play and this is the boreless version that is gorgeous wow that is just cool oh then we have an akiri foil and then a soldier token that was so nice yeah this that was lucky that was real lucky that was a that was a good pull all right yeah so far we've seen the the two most expensive ones out of the you know cast for free so spell so that's really nice ancestral blade very interesting little equipment it enters the battle for you create a token and then attach it to the token and it gets plus one plus one it's okay you create tokens and it's an equipment and it's cheap spy bellows is an elementor that costs six and it's a six one when it leaves the battlefield it deals six damage to target creature and you evoke it for one generic and two red so it costs very little if you ca cast it for the evoke and then you just have two sacrifices at the end of turn enabling the six damage so that's really good 
and Stable Obelisk. This is an artifact for three generic. You tap to add one generic. For seven generic and tap it, you destroy target permanent. Very good removal for drafting actually, because then it just stays on the board. So Ray Scorpion, it's an okay card. It's a one, two, or one black. When it dies, it deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life. It's an okay card. Staunch Throne Guards, a two, five construct, has vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. Ooh, Pollen Bright Druid. As a one, one elf druid and enters the battlefield, you choose one. You put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or you proliferate. Very, very good for the counters decks. Ooh, exclude counter target creature spell, draw a card. And when I say counter decks, I mean the put a plus one, plus one counter, not these ones. <laughs> anyway, very good counter. Okay, and then uh, Human Assassin, Thorn of the Black Rose is a one, three Death Toucher. And when it is the battlefield, you become the monarch. Very flavorful. Thriving Grove, this is the green of those lands. Frantic Search, very good card. It basically costs nothing if you have three mana. You have to have three lands when you when it's done doing its thing. And you draw two cards, it's card two cards. Very, very good little thing. Path of Ancestry, classic, classic. Very good for drafting, actually. Loyal Drake is a 2-2 flying at the beginning of your combat on your turn. If you control your commander, you get to draw a card. That's nice. And it's really good draw engine for you. Ooh, Characters Wrath, destroy all creatures. They can be regenerated. It is a four generic and two white and it has threshold if seven uh, more cards are in your graveyard then you get to do the threshold ability and this one also allows you to create two white spirit tokens with flying and uh, yeah that's it man it still just destroys everything and then creatures can be regenerated mace of the valiant great little equipment creep creature gets plus one plus one for each charge counter on it on this artifact and whenever a creature enters the battlefield and control you put a charge counter on this this is extremely good for token generation decks as well so this is really really a good card hero's blade another great equipment creep creatures get plus three plus two it only costs two and whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield and control you may attach to it the Heroes played for free instead of paying for generic. Ooh, Yargar. Yargar, the glutton of Urborg. This is a big dumb creature. It's a 9 3 that costs 5. That's it. Next up, Raph Capuchin, Ship's Mage, is a 3 3 that is really good for the artifacts deck. So the white and blue has flash flying, and you may cast your sword spells as though they have flash. So artifacts, for example, Yenit, Cryptic Sovereign. This is a Nesper card, and it's a 3 5 Sphinx. It costs 5 Flying Vigilance Menace, and when Whenever it attacks, reveal the top card of your library. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. If its mana value is odd, if you don't cast it, you draw a card. It's not bad. It's definitely good. It gives you a ton of advantage. You do get to basically play with like the top card of your deck always shown, but it's really, really good. Oh, and it's a rare. Oh, wow. Next up, we have a great, great mythic. This is Grave Pact. It's an enchantment. It costs one generic and three black. And whenever a creature you control dies, each other player sacrifices as a creature. This is amazing for sack decks, aristocrats, Yamot. I love this card. This is a great reprint and that's a great pull. Explorer Scope is our foil, is an artifact equipment. And whenever equipped creature attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you may put it onto the battlefield tapped. Very good for the ramp deck. Very, very good for the ramp deck. And then you get a human soldier and a dwarf berserker. So far, I'm really pleasantly surprised with what we got. I mean, we got two of the free casting spells. We got a Grave Pact. We got a Razakith. And uh, yeah, and even a Marin. I mean, so far, I'm extremely happy with it. Extremely, extremely happy. Cannot be happier. I mean, it is, you know, if you're opening the deck though, if, you, if you're opening the box, it's 300 pounds. I don't know that the value is here at the moment. These rares, we're, we're gonna discuss it overall, but these rares, we're gonna try and see if the value is there at the end, but we'll see. Unbounded potential. This is an instant. You put counters on each of up to two target creatures and then you proliferate and uh, you choose either or you can entwine it. Very, very, very good card for token decks and also for the counter deck. Gargadon, this is a 7-5 beast with trample, five generic and two red. You suspend it for four turns and it costs one generic and one red to suspend. Very good for power matters and ramp decks, not so much. Phyrexian Gargantua is a 4-4 that costs six. And when it's just battlefield, you draw two cards and you lose two life. It's okay, it's a draw, but it's fairly expensive, especially for that color combination. I don't think you'll have a lot of ramp. Snakeskin Veil, this is a classic. You put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and it gains hexproof until the end of turn. This is really, really good to defend your creature and to put a counter on it, very nice. 
letter of acceptance. So an artifact, you tap to add one mana of any color and then tap to sacrifice it to draw a card. Very good little artifact. Murmuring Mystic is a 1-5 human wizard. It costs four whenever an instant or sorcery spell is cast by yourself. You create a 1-1 one, one bird illusion token with flying. Very good for creating more tokens. Campfire, it's an artifact. It costs one for one and tap it, you gain two life. And then for two and tap it, you exile it. You pull all commanders you own from the command zone and from your graveyard into your hand. Then you shuffle your graveyard into your library. Very good card to reset things for you and it's really really good if your command has been removed a couple of times and you don't have too much mana this is really good to just put it in hand you don't have to pay the tax makeshift muni munitions is an enchantment costs one generic and one red and you pay one generic sacrifice an artifact or creature and it deals one damage to any target great for token decks in general or yeah i would say any little decks that really matter about sacking looter ilkor is a one one rogue it has shadow so it can only be blocked or block creatures with shadow and whenever these damage are important you draw a card then discard a card this is really really good it gets looting activated really easily on your board and there aren't a lot of shadow creatures in this drafting set so this is nice Pile of Sentinels, we've seen it before. Ooh, generous gift in the Boardless Art. This is a beautiful little card. Basically, you just transmute or transform um, a, a permanent. You destroy a permanent and then its control gets a 3-3 elephant for free. <laughs> this is really, really beautiful. I love the art, classic. Ooh, Eternal Witness makes a return. It's a 2-1 Shaman and it's a battlefield. You return target card from graveyard to your hand. Very good for returning things that you've played before. Very, very good. Extinguish all hope, destroy all non-enchantment creatures. It's cost six. And also this is downshifted from rare. Fiend Lash. This is an artifact to equipment. A quick creature gets plus two plus zero and has reach. And whenever a quick creature is dealt damage, it deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. Very, very nice nice actually very nice oh rocks passage of course this is a classic i actually like it in a lot of small little creatures decks but also in creatures that really just want to deal damage to a player really really good card i like it surak the hunt color is a formidable creature it's a legendary creature that's five four that costs four to generate two green at the beginning of combat on your turn if a creature you control the total power of eight or greater target creature you control gains haste until the end of turn so you just give haste to any creature so long as you you have an eight power greater now that's not super easy but if you can ramp to it it's not bad like, it's really really good if you can do that part all right aerial knight of wind grace this is a four four human knight two generic and then ords of and it's vigilance two generic and one way to tap to create a two two knight that's really really good for the token part and then for one black and tap you tap x and tap knights to control to destroy target creature card with power x or less this is really really good in the white and black it's really really good it does everything that this architect wants to do in the draft mangara the diplomat is a 2-4 human cleric three generic and one white has left lifelink whenever an opponent attacks with creatures if two or more of those creatures are attacking you and or planes workers in control you get to draw a card and whenever an opponent casts their second spell you turn you draw a card this is insane value card i cannot stress it enough you get to just draw 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 and then you get boom pile <laughs> which is really really nice illustration look at that little goblin so boom pile is a four generic artifact you tap flip a coin if you win the flip destroy all non-land permanents and it's an artifact so this is really really cool i love the flavor of this removal let's see if i can read this fuses we have more than enough now which one was it? Elite Scale Guard is a 2-3 human soldier. And this is foil. When it enters battlefield, you both still two. And whenever a creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it attacks, tap target creature defending player controls. Very good for the counter decks. And then we get a Saproling token and Obnixilis, the Black Oath emblem. Very good. Okay, next up, let's see. Again, I hope you're enjoying this unboxing with us. I hope you enjoy us reading through the cards and giving your opinions of it. It's always fun for us to do. All right, Wonder Strike, great little card. It is fairly expensive. It's four generic and one white, but you exile target creature, then proliferate. Impulsive Perforer is a one-one goblin pirate and it costs only one. When it dies, you create a treasure token and then you can encore it. So you get to basically carry four of him. Uh, well, three of him, you attack each 
separate opponent and then you just it dies and it creates three mana so basically you encore it for one extra mana so not bad not not bad at all foundry inspector very good for all artifact matters decks this is so so good i cannot stress it enough artifact spells you cast it costs one generic less to cast this is very very good carrion grub is a zero five insect and costs four and it gets plus x plus zero where x is the greatest power among creature cards in your graveyard when this is battlefield you mill four cards definitely good for the control slash reanimator deck Deadly Recluse, 1 2, Reach, Death Touch, or Spider. Really good to remove something or just create some nuisance as a defense. Witching Well, and this is a great reprint from Throne of Eldrain. When this is a battlefield, you scry 2, and then for 3 generic and 1 blue, you draw 2 cards. Not bad. Then Explorer Scope, and I've seen it. Oh, Prismatic Piper makes a return. Windcaller Haven is a 4 3 flying, cycling for 1 blue. And when you cycle it, you target creature gains flying until the end of turn. So it's not bad. And if you can reanimate it, that's even better. Thrabin Inspector is a classic. It's a human soldier, it's a 1 2, the cost only 1. And when it enters the battlefield, you investigate, so you create a clue token. Ulma Crasher is an 8 8 4 8. It has Annihilator 2, so whenever it attacks, defending player sacrifices 2 permanents. And whenever it attacks, each, it should attack each combat if able. That's very, very good. Hoarding Dragon, of course. This is a 4 4 flying dragon. It's a 3 generic and 2 red. And when it enters the battlefield, you may search the library for an artifact card, exile it, then shuffle. And when it dies, you may put exile card into its owner's hand. It's a bit of a slow card for what it does, but that's a 4 4 flying for 5, so it's okay. Relic for your towers, a classic, it's a very good card. Meteor Golem. Okay, with a, a different art, it makes a return. As his battlefield is destroy target non land permanent opponent controls. It's fairly expensive for what it does, so there are better cards. Whisper Blood Liturgist is a 2 2 human cleric. Tap to sacrifice two creature, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Great for any reanimate, but also for token decks. Then Kemba, Cat Regent, is a 2 4 cat cleric. At the beginning of your upkeep, you create a 2 2 cat creature token. For each equipment attached to it, extremely good in the equipment deck. Extremely, extremely. Ooh, good. Olamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Now we're talking. This is one of the other great valuable reprints. This is a 10 10 for 10 Eldrazi legendary creature. When you cast a spell, you excel two target permanents. It has indestructible, and whenever it attacks, defending player excels the top 20 cards of their library. This is a great, great card. Ooh, and another good card following it up, Torrential Gear Hulk. This is a 5-6 construct. It's four generic and two blue. You flash it in and enters the battlefield. You may cast target insert card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If the spell will be put into the graveyard, exile it instead. Very, ooh, wow, this is an insane freaking pack. Very good one, Wrath of God, the classic wipe. Destroy all creatures, they cannot be regenerated. It's a sorcery and only costs four. This is a classic, wow, this was a great little pack, honestly. Honestly, I wouldn't want to get that pack in in, um, in, a, in a draft. Honestly, I want to keep all of those cards. Pilgrim's Eye, Foil, and then an Eldrazi Spawn, and then Phyrexian Mirror. Okay, next up, let's see. We're now almost done with the second part of the booster box. Okay, let's we'll start off with Mirror Sire. One one for and Mirror. When it does, you create a one one for and Mirror artifact creature token. Okay, creature tokens, I guess, and artifacts. Sunblade Angel is a three three that costs six. It has flying, first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. A bit expensive for what it does. Okay, next up, Rapacious One, Haunted Cloak. It's a good good equipment. A uh, lot less giant. Once more, Abundant Harvest. Renowned Weaponsmith. Brass Knuckles, okay, we're starting to see a bit more of the same. Crows and Tusker. Ooh, Nadir's Nightblade. Uh, this is a now Warrior. That's a 1 3, cost 2 generic and 1 black. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, just each opponent loses 1 life and gain a life. Beautiful, beautiful, borderless art. Really gorgeous. Douglas Schuller. 
amazing, really nice, and I love this version. Elvish Mystic, the normal version, of course. It's a classic Portal Mage. This is a 2-2 two -two with two generic and one blue. It's a human wizard that has flash, and when it runs his battlefield, during the declare attacker step, you may reselect which player or permanent target attacking creature is attacking. It's okay, I guess. It's not that great for drafting, I would reckon. Oh, Facts of Fiction, this is a classic, two piles. Pull one in your hand and into the graveyard. That's not bad at all. Furious Rides is an enchantment to generic one red. At the beginning of your step, if you control a creature with power four gray, so power matters, so red green. Exile the top card of your library, you may play that card until you exile another card. That's not bad actually. For one turn, you get to do that. Hmm, that's really good actually. Four Bears Blade. It's an equipment, cost three generic. A creep creature gets plus three plus zero and vigilance and trample. And whenever the creep creature dies, you attach Four Bears Blade to target creature you control. That is very good, especially for the second ability. You equip it for three, but basically it just keeps takes care of itself. Oh, Judith, the Scourge Diva, which has been downgraded. as a 2-2 Legendary Human Shaman, it's one generic and then Rakdos. And out of the creatures you control gets plus one plus zero, and whenever an untoken creature you control dies, this creature deals one damage to any target, so this is really good for this color combination because it's Sack Aggro, so that's really, really good. And then we have Isareth, the Awakener, is a 3-3 Death Touch. Whenever it attacks, you may pay X. When you do return target creature card from Manaval, you X from your to the battlefield with a corpse counter on it. Have the creature will leave the battlefield exiled instead of putting it anywhere else. So this is a good reanimator. Yes, you're still paying for those cards, but if you have cards that are cheaper or if you put something into the graveyard that not just generically you want to get back but have no spells to get back, it gives you an out, so that's always good. Oh, beautiful Tisa Karlov, another one of the great commanders reprinted in this set. This is a great, great legendary creature. It is a two generic and then Ords of, and it's a two four human advisor. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Creature tokens you control have Vigilance and Lifelink. So this is great for Aristocrat decks and for token decks with Sack Outlets. This is an insanely good card. And just like Mirren, which we have here, these are really, really good Sack Outlets. And this one is a Reanimate more. This is more token. So these are really, really good. If you've actually seen our reprinting guide shorts, you'll see that these two are in there as some of the better reprinted commanders. Oh, nice. Another great rare is Kindred Dominance, a great sorcery for tribals. This costs a lot, so it's seven, five generic and two black, but you choose a creature type, you destroy everything else and keep the creature type alive. So this is extremely good for tribals. Very good. Oh, and a Dread Return foil, nice. And then we get Eldrazi Spawn and a Mirror. Very, very good. Okay, next, let's see. Very good, actually. Yeah, Kindred Dominance, I try and play it in every tribal deck. Because, yeah, it's really expensive, but at the same time, it's a very good removal on your side. Swift Response, Dwarven Hammer, Thriving Heat, Supernatural Stamina, Ram Through, Filigree Attendant, Givoni Silversmith, Terramorphic Expanse, Kodama's Reach, the normal version, great card, Feed the Swarm, All the Glitters, Herald of the Host. So this is a 4-4 Flying Vigilance Angel for 3 generic and 2 white. So uh, it's kind of like Sarah. And it says Myriad. So whenever this creature attacks for each opponent other than the defending player, you may create a token that's copy of this creature that's an attacking. That player or a planeswalker they control and exile those tokens at the end of combat. This is very good. Not just for um, well, token decks is fine, but for any deck that plays white, I think this is going to be really good. Even in the artifact deck, I will just play it because it's just overall an extremely good card. Then we get Pathraiser of Ulamog, which is a 9-9 Eldrazi, it costs 11, has Annihilator 3, and cannot be blocked except by three or more creatures. So that's really good if you can get this into ramp. I don't know how easy it is to, to cast 11, but yeah. Uh, so far, I've seen some cards that allow you to put some cards into play that are lands and some rampish, but you know, we've opened half a booster box and we have not seen a ton of them. So I don't know if you want to go 
the Eldrazi way here. Loyal subordinate, we're again making a return and then slice and dice. And Kazul, Tyrant of the Cliffs, is an Ogre Warrior, 5-4, they're generic and 2 red. Whenever a creature or an opponent controls attacks, if you're a defending player, you create a 3-3 red Ogre creature token, unless that creature controller plays 3. That's really, really good. It is really good because it's blocking your enemies quite significantly, and it's forcing them to attack your opponents instead, and that's quite decent. I don't know if I would play this, though, as a commander but it has some decent synergy. This one I will play as a commander. So La Shield Clockwork Scholar is a 2-4. Prevent all combat damage that will be dealt to attacking artifact creatures you control. And whenever one or more artifact creatures enter the battlefield you control, you draw a card. This ability triggers only once. So this is a quite good card. I would play it in the artifact. Next up, Audric, Master Tactician. A great little card for human soldier decks. is a 3-4 for a striker. And if you attack with this and at least three other creatures, you choose which creatures block this combat and how those creatures block, so that's really, really good. Oh, nice. Sabine's Reclamation makes a return. Return target permanent card from mana value 3 or less from graveyard to the battlefield. If this spell was cast from graveyard, you may copy this spell and may choose a new target for this copy. Very, very good. Especially in the color combination, you can return something really nice. Oh, this is a rare. I think. It's so hard to tell, honestly, like even with the, the full lighting here. Yeah, it's a rare. Gold color Giza, or Giza. It's a 3-4 human wizard for 3 generic and 2 black. And uh, for 1 black and tap, you sacrifice another creature. So and then token and sacrifice decks. And then you create X-2-2 two, two zombie two creature tokens, where X is the power of sacrifice creature. This is a very good one, actually. I really like it. Wonderful little card. Yeah, I would play it definitely in, in any black deck, honestly, not just the reanimator deck. Even the stack deck would be good with it. Okay, even the slow tokens deck is just overall really good. All right, Anna Bonkin, Timur Battle Mage, Prophetic Prism, Legion Vanguard, Courage in Crisis, Deep Analysis, Thriving Moor, Night in Mirror, Gutter Snipe, Kozilek Predator, Fall from Favor, Ashna's Altar, okay, that's good, yeah. Definitely a good, good little card to reprint. Sacrifice the creature, add two generic. It's really, really nice. There are quite a few interactions with the black-red sack deck. There is the um, black-green deck as well that cares about sacrifice. The reanimator deck as well, the blue and black is pretty good. Return to Dust. This is a classic. Uh, Sandstone Oracle. This is a 4 4 Sphinx flying that costs 7 generic. When enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. The player has more cards in hand than you. You draw cards equal to the difference. Can be really decent if you have a, an opponent that has like 7 cards in hand, you just have 2. But otherwise, it's fairly expensive. Then you get Rampaging Brontodon. No <laughs> mixer returns. The 7 7 for 7. Trample. And when it attacks, it gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of turn for each land you control. Very good for the ramp deck. Oh, T Shar. Okay, Tushar, Ancestor's Apostle, is a bird cleric, 2-2, two, two, flying whenever you cast a historic spell, return target creature card, with mana value 3 or less from graveyard to the battlefield. Very good for artifact decks. It's, uh, well, I mean, it's good for Planeswalker decks, it's good for a lot of things, but mainly in this scene, it's more for the artifact deck, I would reckon. Tetsuo Mizawa, the Fugitive, is a 1-3 human rogue, costs 2, creature you control with power 1 or uh, toughness 1 or less, can't be blocked. Very, very good for token decks. Next, we get CDC Brute Tyrant. It's a Naga Shaman 33 legendary creature for one generic and Sultai. So it enters the battlefield or attacks, you mill three cards. Okay, so more on the control reanimate. And whenever one or more creature cards from, I put into gear from the library, you create a talk, uh, token that's a zombie token, so two, two, that reanimate. Okay, and then disrupt the quorum, go to creatures you don't control. Haha, <laughs> this is very nice. Their and politics don't mix. <laughs> Very nice. And this is also the promo that you get at the store. So I just wanted to show you the promo version of it, which has the borderless art, which is really beautiful. It's foil, quite nice. Okay, it's not a bad card actually. It's uh, it's really nice because you're forcing to all your all your opponents to just hurt each other, and you're just safe for a turn. That's really good. Volshock Battle Gear, simple, gets three plus three plus three and it's foil, and then a clue token and a dragon token, nice. Okay, last one of the second part. And now things should be going a bit quicker. Oh, Kidoki, Champion of the Flame. Fire Mind Vessel, Dread Drone, 
Elysian Carrioted, Rudy Sculpt, Wilshaw Balgear, Custody Squire, Spikeshot Goblin, Meyer Triton, a braid again living lightning murder of crows which if you don't know actually funny enough in english this is how you call a group of crows it's a murder um it's a four four for three generic into blue flying whenever it dies you may draw a card if you do discard a card very good actually uh, it's not bad at all. Frontier Warmonger is a 4-4 human warrior. Whenever one or more creatures attack one of your opponents or a planeswalker they control, those creatures gain menace until the end of turn. That's really good because you're putting on the board threats even on if they're your opponents that are attacking someone else they're gonna be like okay yeah you know what i'm gonna attack someone else because they get menace ravaging blaze is an instant for x into red it deals x damage to target creature and then spell mastery if there are two or more instant sorcery cards in your graveyard it also deals x damage to that creature's controller very good removal and also just damage spell overall Ooh, what would scourge is a hydra zero zero and it costs x and one green and it enters the battlefield with x plus one plus one counters on it and whenever one or more plus one plus one counters on it another non-hydra creature you control is put you put a counter on him as well so amazing amazing card for the tokens deck for the white and green Captain Ripley Vance, three two human pirate for two generic and one red. Whenever you cast your third spell each turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. Then it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Amazing in the Izzet deck. This is a really good commander for the Izzet deck. Nemata Grove Guardian, four five tree folk for generic and two green for two generic and one green. You create a separate link creature one one, and then you sacrifice to give all creatures a plus one plus one until the end of turn. Yeah, it's a slow tokens deck. I guess. Not bad. Oh, Dracoseth the Maul Flames makes a return. 7-7 seven, seven for 7, so 4 generic and 3 red flying. And whenever it attacks, it deals 4 damage to any target and 3 damage to up to 2 other targets. Really, really good card. Really strong and also very good commander, I would say. Lifeblood Hydra. Another Hydra with 0-0 zero, zero and cost X and 3 green. Has trample and his battlefield with X counters on it. And then when it dies, you gain life and draw cards equals to its power. So very, very strong. And Bastion of Remembrance in foil is an uncommon for 2 generic and one black when this is battlefield you create a one one white human soldier creature token and whenever creature control dies each opponent loses a life you gain a life very good in sack decks very very good okay next up we start with the last part so i'm second Okie dokie. Cadaver Imp. Ash Barons. Rot Shambler. Whenever another creature you control dies, you put a plus one plus one counter on Rot Shambler. This is very good on sack decks and overall just any green deck is actually pretty good. It grows pretty big. Vizier of Tumbling Sands. Demon's Disciple. This is nice. Bow Dragonfire. Spectral Grasp. Very good. Cyclops of Astromancer. Good. Drown in Sorrow. Gives all creatures minus two, minus two, and then scry one. Very decent. Oh, counter spell. The normal version. Very beautiful, but I still prefer Arcade Host's version. Crash of Rhino Beetles. Corpse Augur. Fencing Ace. Devil Striker. One, one for two. Very decent, I guess, in the token and the counter generation decks is very nice. Gorman. A five, five demon. It costs six. And to cast this, you need to sacrifice another creature. And then fly and trample and when it's the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. It's decent. They are better. Zahid Jin of the Lamp. 5-6 Jin. Cost 6. You may pay 4. 3 generic and 1 blue. Tap and untap artifact you control rather than pay this spell's mana cost. And that's very good actually. In the white and blue deck. And it has flying. Very, very good in white and blue deck. Ooh, Tatiova, Benefic Druid. The Benefic Druid is a great card because she's a 3-3 that has landfall. When a land enters the battlefield in control, you gain a life, you draw cards, so it's really good in the ramp deck. Although I do foresee that maybe the ramp deck won't be the strongest. Gold color Gisa in the non-foil version. Then we get the Curtain Skull. Has Undaunted, so it costs one less generic for each opponent. It costs five and one, so it can cost up to three. That's not bad. And then destroy two target creatures. That's really nice. Oh, we get another rare, Storm Surge Kraken. This is a 5-5 five, five for five, has Hexproof Lieutenant, as long as your commander is in play. It gets plus two, plus two, and has whenever it becomes fucked, you may draw two cards. Very good. Ooh, that is a beautiful card. Oh my God, this is a Richard K. Ferguson card too. Fact or Fiction. This is in the Boreless Art. Wow, is this beautiful. Wow, that's gorgeous. This is a beautiful card. Ooh, and then you get a monarch. It's such a beautiful card. 
And of course, other. Wow, amazing. All right, here we go, here we go. Yeah, I think the boardless versions are really cool. I love them a lot. Um, yeah, I'll well, give a review of the whole box at the end. Thriving Bluff, the red of these ones, Fierce Empath, Deranged Assistant, Supply Runners, when it's a battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each other creature you control. Very good for the counter deck. Prismatic Lens, Dragon Fodder, Carrier Thrall, Sky Shred Claim, Heart Piercer Bow, Shipwreck Jouser, Command Tower, the normal version. Loyal Unicorn, this is a 3-4 Vigilance Unicorn, it costs 4, 3 generic 1 white, it has Lieutenant. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you control a commander, you prevent all damage will be dealt to creatures you control this turn. Other creatures you control gain Vigilance until the end of turn. This is amazing, I cannot stress this enough. This is a great, great little card, amazing. Feast of Secession, 4 generic and 2 black, all creatures get minus 4, minus 4 until the end of turn, and you become the Monarch. Also very creepy, very creepy image. Falvor Stone, of course, and Animal Magnetism. Haven't seen this in forever. As a four generic and one green sorcery, you reveal the top five cards of your library and opponent chooses a creature card among them. You put that card on the battlefield and the rest into your graveyard. Very good, but it does leave into the end of your opponent what card is put into graveyard. So you're hoping that you have a really big one and only that one to be put in. Tigam Sidisi's Hand, three, four human wizards, three generic and one blue and one black. So the mirror and skip your draw step. At the beginning of your upkeep, you look at the top three cards of your library, you put one of them in your hand, the rest in your graveyard, so reanimator. And then for one black and tap it, you exile X cards from your graveyard, target creature gets minus X minus X until the end of turn. Not bad, not bad. It's not this, this is a good reanimator enabler, but yeah, I think it's a good card. I, it wouldn't be my main commander. Moo, loyal companion, 3-3 three, three dog, vigilance, trample, legendary for three generic one green. If one or more plus one plus one counters will be put onto Moo, so that many plus one counters are put instead. Very good. And the, ooh, Ranko, master of ranks, which has been downgraded from mythic. Okay. This is a 3-3 three, three fairy rogue from the throne of Eldraine. Set two generic and two black flying haste. When it deals combat damage to a player, you choose any number. Each player discards either a card or each player chooses a life and draws a card. Each player sacrifices a creature. Beautiful little card. I really love this card and I love Throne of Drain. So yeah, very good card. Also, if you made it this far, if you love Throne of Drain, stick around on our channel because we will definitely be unboxing something special for you very, very soon. Next up, Decree of Pain. This is a sorcery, costs six rank and two black. Destroy all creatures, they cannot be regenerated. You draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. You can cycle it for five, and when you do, all creatures get minus two, minus two until the end of turn. So, fairly good removal, I think. It is fairly expensive, but you do draw cards equals to that. So, quite nice. The hit in the foil, very beautiful actually falling. And then a clue and a mental token. Kidok, next tip. Next tip, next tip. Ghostly Flicker, I've seen it before. Fists of Flame, giggity. Shelter, Crimson Fleet Commodore. Read the bones, read them, man. We, Dusgard Captain, a good card. Prismatic Piper, yet again. Faithless Looting, Entourage of the Tress, nice. Ooh, this is a nice version of Dread Return. This is the borderless version of Dread Return. Return target creature card from graveyard to the battlefield. This is a good, good card for reanimate and it's beautiful in this version, honestly, very gorgeous. Path to Exile, next to Return, of course, great spot removal. Okay, now that's beautiful. Exsanguinate in the borderless version. This is a great little card. I actually played this in my Yamo deck, so this is going straight into my Yamo deck. It's a beautiful X and two black. As sorceries, each opponent loses X life. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. This is extremely good. I cannot stress this enough. If you, you can play with anything, really. It, it just tends to just kill your opponents and puts you at an advantage. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, we got two so far. That's really nice. Um, really beautiful, beautiful card. And it's an uncommon. Loyal Guardian is a 4-4 Trample Rhino and is so cute. And it's four generic and one green, has a lieutenant. At the beginning of combat in your turn, if you control a commander, you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Very, very good card. 
Kaho, Minamo Historians, a 2 2 human wizard. When it's his battlefield, you search your library for up to three instant cards. Exile them, then shuffle. Goes four. And then for X, you tap, you may cast a spell of mana value X from one card's exile count without paying its mana cost. This is really good, actually. <clears throat> very, very good in the Ezid deck. Um, but it could just be good in overall all decks because yeah, it's any um, of these. So yeah, I mean, instant cards, you tend to have removals, you tend to have damage spells, you tend to have spite spells. So yeah, you can definitely cast this. Very, very good, very good. It, I mean, the downside is of course your opponents get to see them because they're excellent, but yeah, very good. And then we get Zida, Hedron Grinder. It's a 3-3 Grobin ally. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell that targets this, only Zeta, copy the spell for each other creature you control, that spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. Wow, that is good. So if you have like a buff spell that only targets him, you can do that to all the board. Oh my God, that's really, really good. Wow, this, oh my God. God, that was really good. That was a really good freaking pack. Holy, holy moly. So Vala, Heart of the Wilds in a profile version. Look at that beauty. Oh my God, this is a beautiful card. This is a 2-3 legendary creature, Elf Scout, for one generic and two green. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, this controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature's power. And then for one green, tap it, add X mana of any combination of color where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control. This is such a good commander and such a good overall commander card. This is amazing. Honestly, this is an amazing, beautiful card. Holy moly, that's insane. Oh my God, that's a mythic. Um, yeah, I, I guess like, this is the profile, so I, I can put them aside for now, but holy moly, that was a great, pack um regal behemoth a 5-5 dinosaur trample for four generic and two green and uh yeah trampler when it enters value you become the monarch and whenever you tap a lamp for mana while you're the monarch you add an additional mana so this is a of any color uh, this this is a good good ramper for sure oh days undoing a two generic and one blue sorcery each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into the library then draw seven cards if it's your turn and the turn very good reset very very good research but at the same time you're giving advantage to your opponent so be careful when you use it and then you get deranged assistant in foil uh, the foils of this set are extremely dark i'm surprised these are printed in belgium because they're very dark i would say they're usually it's japan that prints darker foils but yeah and uh, servo and elephant okay next up let's see we only have five including this one left so far some great ones and some okay ones Okay, Cryptic Serpent. Mirror Smith, very good one for the artifacts. Opal Palace, so this we've seen before. Ministrant of Obligation, seen. Bonders Ornament, Blood Aspirant, Witch's Cauldron, Crawling Infestation, Sky Snare Spider, Rapacious Dragon, Thrabin Inspector, Storm Kiln Artist. This is a 2 2, and it gets plus 1 plus 0 for each artifact you control. It costs 3 generic and 1. Red, it has Magecraft. Whenever it casts copy, an instant, a sorcery spell, you create a treasure token. So that's really, really good because you get plus one, plus zero uh, for each artifact, the more you cast. But that's really, really good for Yeza deck. Yep, yep. Vandablast, of course. Destroy target artifact, you don't control, you can overload it. Very decent. And a classic. Thought Vessel, another classic. You have no maximum hand size and you get to tap that mana. Yahini, Undying Partisan. This is... Was this a rare? Let's see, 2-2, two, two, Haster, Legendary Creature, Etherbone, Vampire, plus 2 generic, 1 black. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on him, and then sacrifice a creature, gives his destruction until the end of turn. Yeah, definitely this was downgraded because it's too good. Malik is a Paragon 2-4 uh, Weird Wizard for 4 generic, 1 blue, and 1 red. So it's a fairly expensive for is it? Put it the top card of your library revealed. You may cast instant sorcery spells from the top of your library whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your library you copy it and you may choose new targets for that copy that's not bad actually it changes the way that you play but this is kind of is it personified wow zakama primal calamity beautiful beautiful card this is a huge nine nine for nine for six generic and naya and it's an elder dinosaur legendary creature. It has vigilance, it has trample, it has reach, it can make you coffee. 
And whenever it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, untap all lands you control, that's really good, and then it deals 3 damage to a target creature if you spend 2 and 1 red. And then for 2 and 1 green, destroy target artifact enchantment, or for 2 and 1 white, you gain 3 life. Basically, you cast this, you kind of are gonna win the game unless they remove it, so yeah. Very- Ooh, hoo, hoo, that's another good one. Jet Medallion, black spells you cast, cost 1 less to cast. Beautiful reprint, love it, great card. Oh my god, this is another great one. Spell Seeker. When it enters the battlefield, you must search a library for an instant sorcery card with mana value two or less. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Amazing, amazing one. This is a tutor, and this is amazing. This is a great card. Great pack so far. Priest of the Blood Rite. It's a 2 2 human cleric. It's an uncommon for three generic and two black. When it enters the battlefield, you create a 5-5 demon. Took it with flying. Wow, that's really, really good. And I begin with upkeep, you lose two life. So if you play this and then you manage a way to sack him, which in this call combination, you have quite a, be a bit of sacking, then it's done its job really well. Wonderful. Or you can just block something big and there you go. It's done its job. Wow, that's really nice. Okay. That's good. Let's see next. Star Steel Ingot. Wind Rider Wizard. Sun Spear Shikari, Sulfurous Blast, Pilgrim's Eye, Twisted Abomination, Broken Wings, Goliath Sphinx, Thriving Isle, Frantic Search, Ooh, Path of Ancestry in the Borderless, beautiful, gorgeous, Mark Pool, man, Mark Pool, honestly, classic. Some really great artists, they've done some really, really amazing work for these Borderless. Beautiful card, wow, another one, Arcane Signet in the non-foil, beautiful, beautiful card. And then Loyal Apprentice. This is a human artifice, a 2 1 cost 2, has haste and lieutenant. And at the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you control your commander, you create a 1 1 colorless starter artifact with flying. That token gets haste until the end of turn. Very good, actually. Um, hell, yeah, it's, it's good in general. Like, even if maybe with red you don't want to splash, you know, red for the white and blue, because white and blue cares about our effects, it's still very good in general, because yeah, you're just creating 1-1 one, one flyers that can just hit your, your opponent, and you don't even have to attack with it. So if you control your, your commander, this is really good. Burnish Heart, classic. Yes, it allows you to search for lands. Assault Suit, it's so an artifact equipment that costs four generic, Atta equipped creature gets plus two plus two, haste, can't attack you or planeswalkers you control and cannot be sacrificed. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you may have that player gain control of equipped creature until the end of turn. If you do, untap it. Okay. Okay, so you're basically gifting a really strong creature to your opponents to just do as they see fit. Eh, it's a double-edged sword. I don't know if I'd play it. It can be really good. I would love to see it in play, but it could also be really bad. Rishkar, Primer, Renegade. is a 2-2 Elf Druid. They cost two generic and one green, and when it runs is the battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Each creature you control, with the counter on it has a uh, tap to add one generic uh tap to add one green this is really really good this is really really good so it basically even if you're just playing the ramp version of of like simic you can just add and transform other two creatures into lands givers um, so that's really good baldo keeper of the flame this is a classic equipment interaction legendary commander three two human shaman for two generic and one red. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, for each aura and equipment attached to Valdek, you create a 3-1 red elemental creature token with trample and haste. SL those tokens at the beginning of your next 10 steps. So this is very, very good in uh, equipment deck. Ooh, experiment crush. 4-6 ooze mutant legendary creature for two generic and double simic. Experiment Crotch has all activated abilities of each other creature with a plus one plus one counter on it, and then you tap to add up to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Wow, that's really good, but it's hard to cast. Very cool creature though. Wake the Dead! It's a game that they play in the Adams family. Wake the Dead is an instant, it's X and two black. You cast this spell only during combat on your opponent's turn, or return X target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Sacrifice those creatures at the beginning of the next end set. Very good defensive reanimate. Very nice. And then Mirror Smith in foil and an Eldrazi Cyan token and a Construct token. Okay, three more boosters. 
There we go. Let's go. I love the color of these boosters though. I love the color. It's like this metallic lime green is beautiful. Also, hello throw. Hey dude, how are you doing? <laughs> it looks cool. All right, Ancestral Blade, Spy Bellows, Unstable Obelisk, Seretis, Scorpion, Staunt, Throne Guard, Fallen Bright Druid, Exclude, Thorn of the Black Rose, Looter Core, Nadir's Nightblade, the normal version, very good card for tokens and token sacks, Pile of Sentinels, Bastion of Remembrance, Thran Dynamo in the Borderless Heart, very beautiful, very beautiful Thran Dynamo. It's a classic, very good card. Armorcraft Judge, very nice. Fungal Plots, very nice. Gorkrawl, Terror of Qualsisma. It's a 4 3 legendary bear, 3 generic and 1 green. Creature spells you cast with power 4 or greater cost 2 less to cast, and whenever it attacks, each creature you control with 4 power 4 or greater gets plus 1 plus 1 against trample at the end of turn. Very good for the Power of Matters deck, the Gruel deck. It's really, really good. Then we have Piana, Nomad Captain, it's a 2-2 two -two human nomad for one generic and two white. Whenever it attacks, attacking creatures get plus one plus one until the end of turn. Very good for tokens and just overall good in general. Midi Weather White Duelist, 3 2 Cat Warrior, First Striker, will cost 1 generic and 1 Selesnia. And then whenever it attacks, each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat. Wow. And as long as it is tapped, no more than one creature can attack you each combat. Wow, this is really good. This is very good for the semi combination of deck. This is very good for the Selesnia combination really really good it's uh yeah it's strong because you can buff it up really a lot and you can buff your creatures up a lot with you know all the um, counter generation and then you just swing in with this and it just protects you as well when you do a lot of damage really really good commander i would say for drafting Song of the Dryads is an enchantment, uh, it costs two generic and one green. Set of permanent becomes colorless forest line. So it just basically pacifies into a forest. Not bad actually. <laughs> Whirler Rogue, we've seen it before, very beautiful. And the artifacts deck. Okay, two more to go. Here we go, here we go. Quite a beautiful spread. I really love these cards. Okay, Thriving Grove. Unbounded potential, we've not seen this instant before. It's common, choose one, put a plus one, plus one counter, proliferate, or you can entwine it for four. So yeah, it's not a bad one actually. Gargadon, Trample, and Suspend, we've seen it before. Phyrexian Gargantua, Snakeskin Veil, Letter of Acceptance, Murmuring Mystic, Campfire, I love the campfire, makeshift munitions, uh, by the way, have you seen the the image is really funny. <laughs> the art is really good. Tragic Slip, another great removal. Reverse Engineer, Mirror and Landscape. This is the normal version of the Mirror and Landscape. Reassembly Skeleton, very good regenerating target that allows you to basically sack and regenerate it. Very, very good. Heartless Act, decent removal. Hero's Blade, decent card. Ovaya Pashiri, Sage Life Crafter. One, two, human artificer. Two generic and one green, you tap to create a servo, colorless artifact creature token. And then for four generic and one green, tap it to create X colorless construct artifact creature tokens, where X is the number of creatures you control. Oh, this is good for a token generating deck. Kemba, yes. Rafik of the many. That's a three, three human knight legendary creature, one generic and bant. And yeah, it has exalted. So whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one, plus one. And it can be him, but for example, and whenever a creature you control attacks alone, it gains double strike until the end of turn. So this would be good that it attacks by itself or any other creature gets double strike, you buff it up and it becomes an insanely strong creature. Oh, wow, that's a beautiful card to have. Personal Tutor, this is a great rare. Search your library for a sorcery card, reveal it, shuffle and put the card on top. Very, very good, valuable card. And then Spike Shot Goblin, and foil and a treasure and an elf druid. Last booster, last booster, here we go. And then we'll give our final thoughts on the box as a whole and on the set as a whole in general. Wonder Strike, Impulsive Pulfer, Foundry Inspector, Carrion Grub, Deadly Recruits, Witching Well, Explorer Scope, Mirror Sire, 
Ooh, Commander Sphere and the uh, Borderless version. This is a beautiful Borderless version. Again, Mark Wool. Beautiful, beautiful Borderless version. I mean, you got some of the best, uh, you know, standard things. Yeah, you got this Commander Sphere, the Signet, the Thran Dynamo. Yeah. Okay, Generous Gift, the normal version. One more Crasher. Priest of the Blood Rite and Elite Scale Guard. Okay, so whenever answers the battlefield, you bolster two, and whenever creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it attacks, tap target defending creature player controls. Very good. Spectral Searchlight, J Mage, Gorex. Very good. And Afenza Ken Tree Spirit. 2-2 two, two Spirit Soldier for 2 white. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield and control, you booster one. Very, very good in a token deck. As it's in the Selesnia deck, this is gonna be great. Ooh, Nihib the Eternal is a 4-6 zombie minotaur warrior, 3 generic and 2 red. Has a flick 3. So whenever this creature becomes blocked, defending player loses 3 life. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you add one red for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. A very good, very good card. I love it. Oh, wow. Gildas Lotus is a beautiful card. You tap to add three mana of any one color, five generic artifact. Very beautiful card. And then we get Curtain Skull, a rare foil. Wow, this was a good pack. We've seen it before. Foil, rare, very nice. Okay, so thoughts on this. Very... Fun to open for sure because you get to see a lot of commander staples and decent cards. But for the price, which for us was you know 285, but in general you're spending 300 pounds to buy this. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna be wanting this. I'm um, sorry, the draft booster box as a whole opening unboxing is worth only as a fun kind of thing if you really really want to draft with your friends. Otherwise, just go and draft at your local store. Uh, for it until you know stock supplies last and as long as people can also draft because i think a, a draft can be upwards of 40 pounds but yeah i wouldn't advise you to buy a whole box maybe if you just want to try you can buy a booster or two but it's not worth the value because you can just randomly get everything and the draft boosters especially for this expansion where very well formulated for drafting as a whole. So you don't get a lot of value out of it. I'm gonna go and see how the the set boosters are. And maybe those aren't gonna be better because they're supposed to give you more value. But overall, I would advise you not. I mean, we did get some good pools. Like we got Olamog, we got the Grave Pack, we got Arazic Youth, we got a Ace Silvala profile version. We got some of the beautiful boardless arts. We got some really good, like amazing cards as well, but it's not, the value is not here. We, and you're not expecting to open all of the good ones. If you were to open all the good ones in a box, then yes, you, you're you getting the, the money back. But otherwise it's not worth the value. And the experience is not for box opening. This is not for a box open, 100%. Unlike other sets, I wouldn't advise it. So anyway, this is us. Um, thank you very much. Honestly, from for sticking in <laughs> through the end of this, I know this was a very long one. For Scott and I, thank you very much for sticking around. We will be unboxing everything Commander Masters, and we mean everything, including the decks, and we will be reviewing them and telling you how good they are as a pre-con. And we'll be trying to give an upgrade guide for the most popular ones as well, so stick around for that. We have a little bit of a surprise coming up. Uh, we will tell you more in the future in the next few videos. Center around the deal drain. So that's that's that. But from Scott and I, we thank you very much for your time and patience with us. If you've liked our video, make sure to like, comment, let us know if we could have done something else different, if we can improve. How do you think this set is gonna be? Is it worth opening a draft boosters? Cause that's, that's something that, you know, everybody would like to know. Do you think it's, is it worth it? Is it not? And yeah, other than that, I would ask you to subscribe to our channel. It really helps small channel like us a lot. You have no idea how much it helps small channel like us. And yeah, until the next video, we hope to see you then. Be good, be kind, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.